Hello, and welcome to Film Slam Strings Post Film Conversation for Funky Butt. My name is Eric Seiler. I am a professor of film, media arts, and communications, as well as moderator for this program. We are very pleased to be joined by the director of Funky Butt, Johnny Stapleton. Johnny was born and raised in Nebraska, but he's now in LA and he is a filmmaker there. He's most known for the film that you just saw, Funky Butt, in which he won the largest prize ever for a short film, $50,000 for that. Wow, congratulations, Johnny, on that. Um, he loves to do choreography and you might even see him dancing in some of his films that he has made. But without further ado, let's welcome Johnny Stapleton. And welcome, Johnny. Hey, Eric, thanks for having me today. It's a pleasure. Oh, well, good. I'm glad that you could take some time out of your schedule to join us today. Uh, the, the film, <laughs> funny, entertaining. Where did you get this idea from to make this film? <laughs> Well, you know, we really, I love dancing. I'm also like a choreographer on the side. So I really wanted, you know, most of the films that we've made before this one, I infused dancing in there in some capacity, but this one, you know, we decided we really wanted to make a musical and we wanted to do it for this particular competition in Louisiana, where you basically, you have to shoot your film in Louisiana and then you compete um, against, you know, there's 20 films that are chosen to, um, to compete for the $50,000 and, you know, we love the idea of doing something that has like a little bit of a Mary Poppins vibe, but um, something that was a little bit, you know, funkier. And um, yeah, and I guess that's that's kind of where we started from. And then um, also the idea of this, um, you know, Buddy Bolden is a, uh, you know, a jazz legend that a lot of people don't often hear that name. They hear, you know, Louis Armstrong or, you know, Miles Davis, but, um, you know, that was a name that we kind of wanted to throw out there since he's considered by many as, you know, the father of jazz. So that was, that was something we wanted to kind of put out there. So people are like, oh yeah, that's, you know, who maybe have, haven't heard of him. Uh, yeah, that's a great way to um, um, introduce a little bit of history in the film, Charles Buddy Bolden, um, uh, and in terms of um, his relationship with jazz and also funky books, but, but is also like a blues dance. Is that correct too? Yeah, yeah, it was like, it was one of his most famous songs. And it, at the time it was kind of, uh, it was a little taboo. Like if you were walking in the street and you were humming humming that melody or singing those words, um, you know, by now I don't think, you know, we would feel that way about it. I mean, they're, they're pretty, <laughs> they're not really that, uh, that taboo now, but at the time. So it was kind of the idea, like this thing that maybe isn't really talked about, um, sort of like being this this horn as like the same idea as like funky, but the song, you know, something that um, is kind of this sort of cool, fun secret, you know, and then, you know, that would be one of like the big songs that they would play in the clubs, funky, but. Right. Interesting, interesting. All right, let's talk uh, more specifically about the film, um, the cast. How did you cast the film? Are these some dancer friends of yours or did you hold auditions? Can you speak a little bit about that? That is actually a pretty interesting scenario. Um, we initially had cast two, like our two leads were two different actors and we, you know, this film we were kind of in prepping it for a long time because we were planning on shooting it the previous year. And then we had to push it back and we had some other delays for like various reasons like, you know, films have. and. Um, Actually, the week before we shot, we had to recast the two leads, both the little girl and grandpa. And um, and that was probably like the most stressful part of the shoot. And it was for reasons I won't get into on here, you know, like some scheduling, some other aspects. But, um, you know, we went back to our we held another a quick round of auditions and um, uh, we also, you know, looked back to our second choices for both of the roles. And, you know, in some ways it actually worked out better. The, the guy that we had cast as grandpa initially was a little bit younger. He was more of a, he was like a tap dancer by trade. So we were going to infuse like tap dancing into the choreography and the girl, um, the initial girl, she was a little bit more of a singer, but she actually wasn't as, as strong on the acting front as the girl that we ended up um, casting. So uh, that luckily they were both available and they were super excited to do it. And we're like, you need to learn these songs. We're going to do some dancing. And, um, and they just jumped right in and, uh, and it ended up working out really nicely. 
And most of the dancers, a lot of them are friends, um, or we, we actually held auditions in Louisiana um, in the town of Shreveport and had a lot of uh, people in the, the film community there and a lot of people in the, um, you know, in the arts and the, in the various um, theaters, the community theaters down there, as well as um, involving a lot of people from one of their uh, nursing homes for the final dance number. Well, I'm glad things worked out uh, for the character of Jet Jasmine and Grandpa Joe. Um, they, they worked out really well, uh, very convincing in their roles. Um, how long did it actually take for you to um, shoot the film? How many days of shooting? I think, you know, I think we did about seven days and that's pretty long for a short film. And the reason is because we had a, a child and, you know, there are like pretty strict regulations for good reason that you can't, you know, you can't work a child for like so many hours. So the shoot days, since she's in almost, I think just about every single scene in the movie, you know, we would keep our shoot days shorter, um, which was really nice because for us, we're used to shooting a short film and cramming it all into two to three days. So it kind of, it actually gave us a little bit of time to um, kind of stretch things out and um, get it all done. Well, well, good, uh, it, it, it worked out well. Now let's talk a little bit about the music. Um, how did you um, get this music scored? Did you hire um, a musician or, or an organization to record the music for you? Yeah, it was a, 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 a musician slash actor friend of mine. His name's Corey Landis. Um, you'll probably see him in a lot of various commercials and things like that. Um, he, uh, he had starred in a film of ours called The Man from Mars two years before that. And, um, and after that's that's how we met him and we became really great friends with him and um, I would go to watch him perform and he's a piano player, uh, but he knows how to play various instruments and uh, I loved his music I thought it was really fun and so when we got the idea to do this, I was talking to my, my co writer his name is Domenico Grasso who had also seen uh, Corey play and he's like what if we got Corey to do the music for this because at that time we didn't really know we knew we wanted to do a musical but we didn't know who we were going to get to do it and we obviously can't do it ourselves and um and i was like you know what i think that's a brilliant idea so we talked to Corey, and Corey was totally down to do it and um you know we started collaborating so uh we used one of his um arranger friends because so he wrote the songs you know the melody and the lyrics and then he, a uh, friend of his, did the arrangement to basically figure out all these various instruments, you know, what they were going to be playing. And then um, it, that was probably one of my favorite parts is like the recording process, going in the studio with these great jazz musicians in LA, bringing them in there and like really getting to hear it. Because before that, you just hear the demo, you know, you hear these computerized demos and it doesn't sound that great when you hear it like, the, the notes coming from like a ding, 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 do, 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 it, you know, that's what it sounds like. And you're just hoping you got to, there's a lot of trust in that person. And you're like, well, the melody sounds good. Let's, let's, let's go with this. And then when you hear the instruments played, it really comes to life. And that was, that was a great, um, exciting experience for us. Well, well, wonderful. Yeah. See, he did a really remarkable job um, with the music, which was a key element in the film. Another key element um, and the film was the um, choreography. Did you choreograph um, um, the dance scenes? I did, I did. And I think those are like the days that are the most fun, probably the most rewarding and the most exhausting. Um, I'm even like seen in there dancing. One of our, our main dancers that we had in the, in the scene, he, um, he got hurt um, that like, so we weren't really able to use him. So I was more than happy to jump in there. But I realized after we were shooting some of these scenes, you know, I'm not as young as I once was and um, I get exhausted pretty quickly. And I think even more than that, you know, when you're out there and you're, you're doing the dance take after take, um, you don't really have any breath left to like holler to a crowd of people. Luckily, like they, they brought in a, like we brought in like a microphone and everything so I could just talk to everybody between takes. And I think for the final bit of the dance scene, I just thought, I'm not gonna be in this, <laughs> I don't need to do this. But, um, but I love choreography. I've always been, I got into that probably in high school. So that is, you know, part of the reason I wanted to make the film in the first place and, you know, trying to come up with this choreography, you know, moves that involve us kind of shaking our hips and shaking our butts and all that kind of thing. It's just, it's just fun. And then, you know, seeing a group of people learn the moves and then see them dancing in the street. And we had to block off these streets, you know, in order to, to dance on them. And like that, you know, so you have the police there and everything. It's just like 
when all of these things come together and then you see it there, it is, it's, yeah, you know, it's kind of the reason that you make the film in the first place is more than almost the finished product. Sometimes it's the experience of like witnessing it come together like that with all of these people who've like learned the dance and taken time out of their day to come here and do this. And, you know, a lot of those dancers were not necessarily getting paid, they were volunteering. So it's like, it really means a lot to see it all come together. It, it, it does. The process is just as important as the um, from finished product. Uh, another person I, I can't leave out who um, was significant in this film was the choreographer, was the um, cinematographer. Now, did you storyboard this uh, or did you allow the cinematographer just come up with the um, um, various shots? Well, interesting for our process. So the, the, the cinematographer, his name is Domenico Grasso, and he's kind of the, my, my main collaborator. So we actually, um, he's more than just the cinematographer for us. He's the, um, he's like the co-writer, co-producer, like we are like kind of teammates. Um, and uh, so we come up with like the story together. So that way he's got a lot of ideas in his head and he's like really great and collaborative on like the, um, the, the storyboarding process. So we'll do it together and n neither of us are very good artists. So these, you know, I, I wish I had a picture here to show you, but it's, there's stick figures, you know, but if you can draw stick figures well enough and, you know, and maybe sometimes buildings in the background, you can get the idea across of what you're wanting. So, um, you know, we did that together and, um, and, you know, this is probably our fifth or sixth thing that we've made together. So we've got like a good second hand where, you know, when I'm talking about how I want the camera to move, he understands that. And when he's describing the way he sees these shots, I get what he's saying. And, you know, a lot of them we plan out pretty meticulously ahead of time. Like, you know, even so much so like the, the last, one of the last scenes um, where they're giving the cornet back to grandpa, that was literally planned out beat by beat, even with the music, because we knew the melody. Um, that's actually, the melody of, um, that is the, I'm not sure. I think that is the, um, the melody of the like funky butt. It's like a, it's like a slowed down version of it. And um, we like planned it all out to that, like shot by shot. Um, and uh, that part was a little tedious, but it's, it's, you know, when it comes together in the end, it's, it's really nice. It, it is. You did a, that a couple of times in the film, especially in the opening scene when um, Jasmine has the um, paper bird and you have the um, the uh, hi-hat playing and she's moving her hand to the um, beat of the sound of the um, um, hi-hat instrument as she looks at the kids playing. So I'm glad you like, like, I wish Domenico was here right now. That that was like in his mind from the very start. He, was, he said, this is how it has to start. This will be the very first shot. We're going to see this little thing. I think we shot that probably we did 15 takes of it um, just to get like, we're like, this needs to be right on the beat of the music. And we had the music at that point. So it needed to be like, you know, you know that kind of, that jazz, like little, yes, you know. So. It, it, it's, it's exactly, yes. That was very, very noticeable and well done. And he did a good job with the, um, I guess he used the steady cam at some point for the dancing. Oh yeah, he, a um, lot of that. Know, went through the dances, so that was good. Uh, I just want to remind our um, audience, um, we are talking to the director of Funky Butt, Johnny Stapleton. If you have questions, please put them in the Q&A portal and we'll get to them in our remaining time as it allows. And um, one, oh, we have one question. One question uh, that's come in, uh, wants to know is, um, why was um, Grandpa's Joe's daughter uh, against him playing the cornet? You know, so this is one of those things where, you know, in a short film, you have a tough time kind of um, um, giving a lot of backstory. And that was like, unfortunate, because, you know, there, you have a little bit more. And that's one of those things that kind of you end up when you're trying to keep the film down because it needed to be 15 minutes, ended up losing it on the on the cutting room floor. But um, so that has to do with when he plays, he gets excited and he kind of just takes off and then he's sort of like difficult to find. So the idea would be that, you know, back in the day, um, he was basically a little bit um, obsessed with this instrument and something that probably started as a very like joyful experience when she was younger at a certain point, um, you know, when he was getting older, uh, he would kind of like take off and then they would need to go find him and he would kind of get himself a little bit into some maybe 
you know, troubling situations. And um, that was kind of like the idea of it. And unfortunately, we weren't able to like delve into that as much as I would have liked. Um, and uh, also, we weren't able to maybe like delve into his his mental illness because there's still like an element of that that he he was actually experiencing in the film like he was talking to people who weren't there so the idea was is that was kind of getting um progressively more difficult to deal with they thought it's just going to be easier if we take this instrument away from him so that way he's just you know he's easier to sort of contain and then you know i think ultimately they learned that there is there is a compromise there like we can allow him to do this and um he can still you know, he can still function and he can still, you know, lead a very enjoyable life. Right. The, the, um, right. There's some backstory there that we have to, um, you know, contextualize as we look, look at the film. And another question that has come in is um, why do the adults keep telling the little girl to speak up? So I guess there's some backstory to that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, sometimes, um, you know, kids who are, you know, I have a, a nephew and, you know, that gets told sometimes where there's, they're a little shy, you know, and like, even though she's speaking and you feel like, you know, like as an audience member, you're, you can generally hear her, but they're, they're not hearing her. And it's kind of like just sort of using your voice and kind of going along with the song to, to basically like be bold, speak up for like what you want, what you're passionate about and, um, and use your voice. And that's kind of the idea. Like, they're always like, like what was that speak up, speak up. And then in the song, you know, you got to play it loud is kind of the idea. The same thing with her, that is like her journey is to kind of learn how to not be so shy and instead, you know, get out there and, and say what she's got to say and put her foot down, kind of like she does with her mom in the end where she speaks up and sort of tells her mom, you know, what's what. And then her mom at that point, like really does like finally listen and hears her. Oh, oh, good. That's that's good to know. Another question has come in is this person says, I was wondering, in one of the scenes, there was a picture on the wall. Is that funky, but it's the scene where they were looking for the key. In a way, it is. That's um, that is a picture of Buddy Bolden. There, there aren't many pictures of him online to find. And that is like, you know, Charles Buddy Bolden, the um, part of the inspiration for the story. That's like one of the few images that there are of him, this painting. And um, so we had that, you know, our own painting made um, that is like his portrait. And um, that's basically him there up on the wall. And that is another thing, you know, when you think of like the things that don't always uh, make it in the film. So when we made this film, it needed to be in the 15 minute time limit. And um, one of the things, if we ever got an opportunity to, to do a like a funky butt feature down the line, we would explore the, the legend of Buddy Bolden much further, but in the movie, since we were on a, a bit of a time limit and we needed to focus on our core story, we weren't able to to get into his story as much, which is absolutely fascinating. But it's like that is that is the guy, and now his spirit it lives inside this coronet, and like that's where the magic is coming from. And Grandpa knows this. Yeah, he definitely does. Another question has come in. You kind of answered this already. Um, uh, this person wants to know who slash what inspired you to make the film. But I guess uh, you can just briefly answer it again, but also add to that, I guess, what do you want people to take away from this film? Ooh, that's good. Um, I think, you know, I, I inspired by a lot of um, just like musicals in general, you know, Mary Poppins being one of them, but um, I, I, I'm a musical lover. So I think there were a lot of different stories that I think came into play um, while like, putting this together. Um, but as far as like what people should take away, you know, a little bit of what I spoke to about, you know, if, if you're a kid or, or, or just anyone who you feel like, you know, people aren't like listening to you, not being afraid to, to speak up, um, that being, you know, kind of one of the morals of the story, but then also just, you know, the fun, like finding the fun in life. A, a lot of the films that we've made are about like kind of people finding their joy and like, and then fighting for it. And I guess, you know, fighting for what makes you happy. And, um, and also like, if there's someone else that you see and there's something that makes them happy, maybe helping them find their joy as well. No, good things to know, good things to know. Well, this has been a really good conversation. Um, we got a lot out of it. Before I let you go, can you let us know what you're working on now and which we can see from you in the near future? 
Well, you know, down the line, um, I know we would love to make a full length feature of this at some point. That's probably still a ways off. But um, the thing that I'm, I'm working on right now, actually with my girlfriend who also is in the, the film industry, um, film and TV, um, we're trying to get a, um, an animated uh, series off the ground right now. We're kind of in the process of pitching it. I can't talk too much about it, but it's, it's a little bit more in the like adult animated um, you know, vein uh, of comedy, but I still think it would be something that a lot of kids would be able to like watch and enjoy. And it's got, it's fun and it's, and it's inspiring. And it's, um, you know, touches on a lot of, of various themes that I think are, are pretty relevant today. Um, but I, I can't really get into the details of it since we're still kind of shopping it out there right now. But um, yeah, so I wish, I, I wish I could tell you more, um, but that's, that's sort of where we're at. And we're, we're working on that. And then, and one other um, uh, TV show idea that's, both kind of in the um, like feel good vein and ultimately inspiring stories. And I'm sure they have some type of dance element in it as well. Oh yeah, we'll get dancing in there one way or another. It'll be <laughs> there. We'll have music in there. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, great. Uh, before I, well, one last question real quick is um, uh, awards. Has, what, has this film won a lot of awards? I know you won that big prize. Has it won other awards? Yeah, so we've won some other, um, I think we won best family film at the um, Cleveland International Film Festival. Um, we've gotten a lot of, um, I think, like, like honorable mention at various like um, other festivals. Um, it also received best actor for um, Isaiah, who's our, the guy who plays uh, grandpa in the film. Um, and uh, yeah, I think, yeah, I think that's kind of it. That, that's what's coming to mind right now. Okay, well, that's good. Yeah, it's very uh, um, worthy. And um, musical films are, seems like they like a, a lost art. So I'm glad that we still can see um, that today. <laughs> and the young people can see that too. <laughs> Absolutely, thank you, Eric, I appreciate that. Okay, you're quite welcome. Well, Johnny Stapleton, thank you very much for joining us. Congratulations on all your, all your success. I appreciate the time that you took out um, um, to be with us today. Thank you so much, it was a, it was a real pleasure. And thank you to our audience for joining us as well, too, for this important and invigorating conversation. For more information about the upcoming Cleveland International 45th Film Festival, please continue to follow SIF on social media or visit clevelandfilm.org. I'm Eric Seiler. Thank you. <laughs>